Hey everybody, what's happening? Welcome to this episode of Press Start TV. We're here today to talk to you about the PlayStation experience. We've got some theories. We'll see what happens. Uh, that's coming soon. We're also going to talk about GamesCon, some of the news that was announced at it. And we'll also be having our SmashCon wrap up, uh, which was a great experience. Great experience? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah sorry. We were tasting yeah, lot, 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 <laughs> Lots of fun. SmashCon was awesome. SmashCon was awesome. Um, yeah, great. My name is Will. This is Gage. Hi. This oh. is Nine. Here hi. I am, ready to like wave and say yeah. hi. And you guys you... were complaining last time about who got announced first. Were we complaining? Yeah. You were. <laughs> well, that makes sense. And then he made yeah. me feel bad by being last. I should be first and last. So, let's get into it. Um, and by the way, we had, you were on every camera last week. I was. <laughs> Incidentally, yeah. I just watched the episode back. I was like, hey, hey. Uh, let's talk about the PlayStation experience. Um, this is the second year, right? Yep. Uh, I believe this is the second year, yeah. Uh, Sony has done this. It's going to be in San Francisco on December 5th and 6th. Last um, year they were in Vegas. So. What do uh, What do you guys think we're going to see at this? I swear to God, if we don't see God of War. God of War. I'm going to be really upset. Because now what? Man, they teased the living daylights out of God of War last year. Well, the guys came out on the stage. They came with the out shirts. wearing shirts yeah. for God of War. The, the 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 VP Ryan, whatever his last name is, I can't remember his name, wore a God of War like Omega logo. Okay? Okay. Then the Sony Santa Monica guys come out and they play the God of War like background music. And I'm like, oh my goodness, it's gonna be God of War announcement. <laughs> now We've got never saw God of War. E3 anyway. had, had Horizon, Last Guardian, the Final Last Fantasy of, thing. Uh, not Last of Us, um, Uncharted 4. Uncharted, some pretty amazing games. Sure. Name one other game other than God of War that could be a huge deal at this thing. Uh, what else do they have in their, in their toolbox to pull I mean, out? they didn't really announce a lot last year game-wise. It was all like hardware kind of upgrades and specifics and stuff. Right. Um, like they announced the PlayStation TV. Um, <laughs> Big deal. <laughs> the, the PlayStation Vita TV. The small box for a hundred bucks or whatever. That's yeah. what that was. Sure, yeah. sure. Here, it's um, on the They announced uh, the limited edition Batman console. Was that that the was thing? announced at that? Yeah, that was awesome. I don't think it Pretty was. Pretty sure it was. No, it wasn't. You sure? Because I bought my PlayStation in March, and it was announced like a month later. Anyway, oh, anyway. what else? I mean, they, they announced a bunch of like new colors for controllers. The blue and red controllers were announced. Yeah, okay, I don't so, think, so maybe some new hardware. <coughs> we'll probably. I think see. we'll see a Morpheus launch price. I was ah, going to say I think Morpheus is going to be a big and a part date of it. That's Morpheus. that's a good. I think call. it's going to be a huge focus on Morpheus. Okay. That's I mean, that's very fair to say. Makes it's, sense. It's the end of the year. And it's Morpheus is supposed to be launching. One, that's right. Uh, in 2016. 2016 yeah. So. so. Okay, well, I mean... And but, God of War. But we could expect God of War, I, I think, for sure. So God of War and the Morpheus, and that's pretty much it. We all know <laughs> Santa Monica's working on God of War. Sure. They just haven't announced what it is and where it falls in line with the rest of them yet. Sure. So. Well, we'll see, we'll see what, the, what they do. Um, you know, last yeah. year they had some pretty decent announcements. And maybe a date for Uncharted. Well, I was going to say, you're probably going to get your Uncharted either date or beta start um, date. Because the beta is coming with uh, Nathan, the Nathan Drake the Nathan collection. Drake collection. Yeah. Um, I was thinking it's a lot of it's a lot of Morpheus stuff. I'm thinking, sure, you're gonna see your God of War thing. I think we're gonna see whatever Sucker Punch is working on. I think we're gonna see whatever oh, Ben's yeah, working on. Sucker Punch. Um, and there's another studio in there that I was thinking about. Um, but I was, well, we already know what Gorilla is working on. Sure. And of course, yeah. they're saying like everything that's coming out in the 2016 era, uh, year that they're going to show off is going to be playable for people there. So, so yes, yeah, so we'll get a more in-depth experience, a little bit more in-depth look at uh, those big yeah. titles. And their blog about it is strongly suggesting they register their uh, your PSN account when you sign up. So I'm thinking they're going to be sending fans with some games and betas that way. And by the way, we're talking about uh, the PlayStation experience coming out in December. Uh, the, that event will be launching in December, and you're watching and listening to Press Start TV. Um, so, uh, with that being said, you know, GamesCon, Microsoft, we'll talk about that here in the next segment, but sure. Microsoft had a good presence there. Um, what Do they do their own events? Nintendo has their own events, right? Nintendo I does mean, directs every couple of Microsoft months. Microsoft does more of a Windows event than they do. Yeah, they show off their Windows stuff, which yeah, is they, so Yeah, they do an announcement for Windows every year, but they don't really do anything focused on, like, Xbox. I think we'll see them start to do it. Although they they killed it at E3, they killed it at Gamescom, but Sony wasn't at, they skipped Gamescom for Paris Games Week. Like, they just didn't do it. Yeah. Right. So they, well, they had, like, small presence, but basically nothing at Gamescom. Yeah, so, 
I mean, Pentium maybe Microsoft out. doesn't need, I mean, this is something that just because Sony started to do it doesn't mean everybody, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah I mean, th th there's nothing that says Microsoft has to have a press conference just for themselves. Yeah, they don't have to. But although for two weeks in December last year, Sony owned the market for two weeks because all the hype they curated with their event. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, it was an awesome event. A marketing strategy? Could be, but if Sony's going to keep dropping out of other events, Xbox can just be like, well, I'll, we'll take something that's already established, our, people are already going to be tuning into, and we'll just use that. We don't we'll do need their to do own their thing. own thing. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. I mean... But I don't yeah. think it's a bad idea to do their own thing either. Sure. You know, sure. they could just hold it up there in Seattle Generate with all the rest of their stuff. Their, yeah. Their products. Whatever they've got coming out. Although they're pretty open about their games anyway. They're, yeah, they're not really holding they're anything definitely, back. I mean, they're definitely changing their market strategy. Like, hugely changing their market strategy. Thank you, strategy. Phil Spencer. Appreciate it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, and Phil has definitely got his head around what Xbox should be. And, you know, and I, I don't know if I was, I was getting ready to say <coughs> maybe Sony should just show up at Gamescom and just have all their stuff they had at E3 playable, um, you know, for people to, to get it. But when I, when I was thinking about that, I was like, maybe they don't want to give people too much of an in-depth look at in playing their games. Just but we always, we've talked about it on the show a bunch of times. <laughs> they don't have a fall lineup. <coughs> they don't. They, there's ads on TV of a scissor reel for PlayStation 4 coming this fall. It's all third-party games. There's not one first party game in there. Nope. They're, they have nothing. Uncharted got bumped out. Last Guardian, there's no release date yet. Right. Yeah. You shut up. You <laughs> we got a second Gosh. trailer. <laughs> See what happens there. Release <laughs> date. How long are you going to wait for that? It'll be out next year. <laughs> That's how long. Put money on it right now. Nope. Uh, <laughs> because every time I'm putting money on bet. Last Guardian, it should. Yeah, they won one bet, too. Yeah, but he lost one. I'm going to squeak the chair some more. Anyway. All right. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens at the, this year. Um, but yeah, it's, it could be a good marketing strategy because just before the holiday season, um, Christmas, I mean, a lot of people are going to be buying stuff anyway. And when they see that uh, that hype, as you said, that might you know shift them to, to do it. But uh, we'll have more all for you right after this. Hey, welcome back. Uh, we just got done talking about uh, the PlayStation experience and, and some, some theories on what we could expect to see there. Uh, right now we're going to be talking about Gamescom and coming up after this we'll be talking about the PlayStation. <coughs> Again, you're watching listening to Press Start TV. My name's Will. This is Gage. This is Nine. Still second. Last again. I swear. You're the last of us. And uh, let's talk about <laughs> Gamescom. No, he's not. That was good. That was bad. I'm in the last of us, too. Drug of the week. I'm in the last of us, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gamescom. <laughs> okay. Halo Wars. Halo Wars 2 was announced. Yeah. yeah. Did you play this game a lot? Well, I played it once. <laughs> I didn't even play it. The I was like, ooh, what's this? What's this? What's the this? The worst time I was be like big ever Halo. played and, the Halo and game. I found out it was an RTS. I was like, oh. I well, like RTS. Let me tell a quick story. Right. Okay. So we set Cage up <laughs> to play against this kid because uh, he was waiting to do something in one of our stores. and. He didn't do very well. I got I got <coughs> I got beat badly by an eight-year-old kid. And the thing about it was, he was talking the whole time like, "See how good I am at this game? Look, look at all this stuff I can do." I'm like, "Kid, you gotta shut up." It was I've never fun. played this game before. It was like, <coughs> no, it wasn't. I'm anyway, looking. Halo Wars 2. Um, you know, it. it's an RTS, <laughs> uh, real-time strategy game, and. You know, it takes place in the Halo's universe. Hopefully, I don't know if it'll continue the story or what the plans are I with it, know. but apparently did well enough to warrant them making it. I think it was a fan outcry, and they've been crying out for a long time. And they even, there was even a Halo Wars. RTS fans are weird, well, man. <laughs> but they won't continue a game unless it's worthy of doing <laughs> another one. Not most really. Not in, in some no. cases, sure. I, mean, I said like, most of the time. All right, <laughs> all right let's, let's. Never mind. How many, how many games have made on like fans wanting a game? You know, a there's lot. been a lot of games actually where the first game was terrible, but the second game ended up making. Been a lot of movies that way too. Uh, yeah, sure. But <laughs> Halo Wars 2, like it or not, it's coming your way. So yeah. look out for that. Uh, the Mafia 3 uh, trailer was uh, really cool. Released. Yeah. Really cool trailer. I, you know, the games have <laughs> kind of. I don't. I don't want to say they flew under the radar, but they, it's not like they were massively popular. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I was coughing. Anyway, anyway. Um, is that what you call that? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to cough me on mic. <laughs> so it's not, it's not like the games were hugely popular, but um, the, the second one did very well. But this one looks really cool. I mean, this one does look cool. Really neat. Like, I'll probably pick this one up because it looks that cool. Yeah, and I was speculating in our on our podcast, the checkpoint earlier checkpoint, in the week. Yeah. Uh, I was saying that the four people showing off in the trailer, 
I think, and I haven't seen any gameplay stuff at this point still. I still have not watched any other stuff from Gamescom. I'm so, I'm so behind. Yeah. I'm thinking that oh, maybe there might be a switchable character kind of thing there. Like a Grand Theft Auto. Like a Grand Theft Auto thing, yeah. where we get to play different stories, and I think that would be very cool to do. Because yeah. in the trailer, the, the, the main Multiple. guy wasn't mm -hmm. your average. You didn't When you saw him, you didn't think Mafia. No. No. Yeah. Which was cool. I, I mean, thought Rambo. It, really? Rambo? Yeah. Rambo. Huh. I thought Black Panthers. <laughs> It was cool. It set it up. It was an interesting dynamic. I liked the, I the whole uh, New Orleans thing and everything. But of course, at the end of the trail, you see some familiar faces and, and that whole thing. So, yeah, some faces that look more mafia yeah. than the normal guy. Anyway, no, yeah, yeah. moving on. Definitely look cool. Um, and right now, once again, we're talking about GamesCon, some of the news that was announced there. And you're watching Listen to Press Start TV. <gasps> uh, my name's Will Gage and I. I asked again. What's it like being last this week? Wow. It really sucks. Wow. Wow, Legion. <laughs> World uh, of Warcraft Legion. The next expansion uh, is titled Legion. Yes. So all of you World of Warcraft fans, I'm sure you already know all this, but all of you people that don't really care, now you know too. Uh, so <laughs> the World of Warcraft Legion. That's a way to plug it. I mean, For all you people who don't care. It's not like they're hurting. I know that they oh, they're hurting right now. They're uh, at their lowest 5.9 yeah. yeah. million. Yeah. Okay, so it's not like they're hurting. They still have that many people that are playing their game. I mean, that's but a lot of people to play a game. What kind of increase can they expect to see with this new installment? Same typical. Yeah, they'll they'll spike. You know, they'll spike their three million or whatever it is. They get their new players in. Up to, up to what? Like nine million. Sure, they would go right back up to nine million. They're they'll probably get not to nine million. But for how long weeks. does it stay at nine million? But so again, like like we said on the checkpoint earlier, this is a totally a fan service expansion pack. Yeah. Everything fans oh, have yeah. wanted out of this game, they're getting in this expansion pack, and it doesn't look like a letdown. It sounds like everything we wanted. It's not Mr. Pandaria. It's not Mr. Pandaria. Congratulations. You're getting Demon Hunters, you're getting Illidan, you're getting a new level caps, you're getting Continents, you're getting yeah, a lot of stuff that you want. Yeah, now. Yeah. Yes. Ridiculous. So I think that's going to get fans back. Hopefully, it can get fans to stay because I love that how successful WoW is. That really just, you know, that's awesome. It's an ongoing thing. Yeah. Runaway success. It's a very uh, addicting type of a game. And I'm sure they're crying all the way to the bank that their subscribers or accounts going down. Oh no, my money oh, bags. Oh no, all this money. <laughs> Um, well, hopefully they can deliver with it, and it ends up being Cheers. a good in installment. What was the last installment? The uh, Warlords of Draenor. Draenor. Yeah, came out last year. Was yeah. that any good? I don't know. I, don't I heard it was that. nice. Yeah. I've seen some gameplay. I, I've skipped a couple expansions. Yeah, it was Catalyst. I've skipped them all. I've played. I haven't played since Catalyst. Yeah. Cataclysm. 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 Catalyst. 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 Catalyst is <laughs> an AMD technology for computers. Moving on to something oh. I don't want to talk about. <laughs> All right, uh, Resident Evil 2. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, the best Resident Evil. It's not. It's confirmed. <laughs> it is. So they're remaking Resident Evil 2. Woohoo! Yeah. Yeah, it's the same studio that did the Resident Evil HD remakes that just yeah. came out. Cool. So totally redone, re remastered, totally Gage. ground up. HD yes. graphics. Ask me is something. this game worthy of a remake? I think it's worthy. I don't think it's the most worthy. Yep. I think there's better options. Why? They've already remade that one. Yeah, but I think they should do it again, though. They don't need to do it again. Why wouldn't they, though? You're always crying that they remake too many games. Which one? they remake the remake. Four. Resident Evil 4. They don't need to remake 4 yet. Don't they? No. No. Don't they? No. 4 is amazing. It is, it's the best one. No, it's, it's really not. good. Although I am complaining about remakes all the time. I don't want to see more remakes, but you know, I still like that they're doing these things to get more money to well, so do new ideas. Let me, let me ask you this. Okay, ask me. Would you rather they remake a game that sold really well and is a really good game or make another crap Resident Evil game. That's kind of what I think Square's doing with Final Fantasy. I'd rather than make the remake first, get all their money, and then get all their, you know, get their backers get in their there. Get their, I don't think there's yeah. anything wrong with taking a game that was a ton of fun, <coughs> great story, bringing a new great generation idea, to it. and giving it They're a nice, it to a new beautiful generation. overhaul. So yeah, all the new people that have these newer consoles. I still play. think they should experience it in its original form. With the I think I think today's gamers sure. will be more inclined to play Resident Evil 4. I, speed, I used to speed run that game. That's how much I love that game. Well, all right. So Gamescom was exciting with lots of good announcements. And, of course, we'll have more of those announcements on uh, this week's episode of Checkpoint. Yeah. Uh, right after this, we'll be talking about Super Smash Con. After this. Woo! <laughs> Hello there. Welcome back. We just got done talking about Gamescom and Sony Experience. And now we're going to talk about Super Smash Con. Which was uh, just this, week. this past weekend. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Super Smash Con, the first ever uh, con. By the way, you're watching, listening to Press Start TV. My name's Will. This is Nine. You. This is Gage. Hi. Let's 
get into this. Say Super Smash Con was the first ever con. Super Smash Con was the first year that Super Smash Con has existed. There you go. Uh, we were there. Awesome. Uh, we were there with our booth, and we also had the Press Start TV Lounge, where um, you know, shout out to all the guys, uh, D1, you know, TK Breezy, all those guys, Anomaly, Anomaly. Us, yeah. uh, PBJ, um, a lot of fun. They joined us. Uh, Gimmer, Gimmer, yeah, from VG Boot Camp for sure. Uh, all those guys. All those guys did a great job, and of course, Justin uh, Wachowski, a great job organizing and putting this thing together. And basically what you had was a whole event over three days where people played 64, Melee, Brawl, and Smash 4. Uh, had a tournament uh, going on the whole time for singles and doubles. Very cool stuff. A lot of fun. Yeah, it was nuts. I got to say that uh, it was a lot more awesome than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I mean, we, we've been to a lot of cons or so. Yeah, we've, covered, we've covered media in a lot of different places. I even said this to the guys there. I was like, I've never had as much fun in our career than I am right now watching Smash Bros. with these guys. Yeah. I didn't even know like half of what was going on most of the time, and I was still having a blast. Oh, yeah. You were on awesome. stage. You had, uh, you know, we were a big part of that whole thing. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. But uh, it was cool. It, I was know, camera guy for finals. Yeah, camera main stage camera right. guys on our show. This guy right here. <laughs> It was cool to see, um, and we talked about this in some of the interviews, which you guys can check out on our YouTube All channel. All uh, But it was cool to see Brawl have such a good show. Brawl, Brawl had a great huge. turnout, even though it was the they filled the room with. It Brawl. was the Friday crowd for Brawl. So, I mean, yeah, it was a little right. smaller than the Saturday, Sunday. But, still, though, you know, listening to a lot of the people the that were there, the house. listening mm -hmm. to the uh, commentators, listening to the players, this is the one of the better showings that Brawl's had in years. Yeah, they oh, said, yeah. Um, I think Leffen said, it, he was like, you know, usually for first-time tournaments like this or even for a first-time national, you don't get this kind of entry. You know, you don't get thousands and thousands of people playing these games. Right. You get like 200, 300 people. We, I mean, there's 150 people playing six, Smash 64, yeah, which at lot. Evo caps at 64 people. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and so that was yeah, the largest tournament ever for 64. Crazy. And then, of course, I think uh, the showing that uh, the, for the finals that Smash 4 had, what a bunch of fun that was. Yeah. That was yeah, that awesome. Was awesome. That was really cool. So I want to have East. Can we have Sam on the show? Yeah, yes. I amazing. really want to get Sam back on the show. That sure. guy was awesome to talk to. <laughs> um, uh, of course, we saw Mango was there. Um, he didn't get a chance to enter this tournament, but we got to interview him. Yep. Yep. Uh, YouTube King, check out all that on our YouTube channel. It, it was uh, really, really cool to see. But yeah, and then of course Melee, uh, the final day on Sunday, uh, just people going nuts, chanting, oh, yeah. jumping up and down, just like a good tournament should be. Mm -hmm. What a bunch of fun! Man. It was really, really cool oh, stuff. Yeah. And everybody was cool. I mean, there wasn't like that whole con experience where you're like, oh, some of this sucks, or like I don't go over there because it's no, not fun. Every every party you went to in the building awesome. was pretty sweet. People were having fun. The players were fun to talk to. They were having oh, yeah. fun. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, I think a lot of people were impressed. Even about the staff how running the event were having fun. Yeah, and they sure. were fun to talk to. Now, even just a little bit of stress that was going around. Everybody was having fun. Yeah, but even like Justin said, you know, you think something's really big and really out of whack, and it's really not. Once yeah. you get over there, it's not that big a deal. Yeah. That's right. So the biggest thing you have was stress all week. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Uh, and we're talking about Super Smash <laughs> Con. We're talking about a wrap up uh, show uh, for that and, and, you know, how much fun we have that. And you're watching, listen to Press Start TV. This is Will, Gage, and Nine. Yep. Uh, so the other aspect of Super Smash Con, which was really cool, was the developers that were there for the indie games. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you go to these things and you see the indie game booths, you don't expect a lot. I mean, and what we got there, there was six, seven, a handful of games, yeah. not many. But it was the still games that were actually... six, and then I think it grew to like seven or eight yeah. The, yeah. The, the, by Sunday. But it was games we've seen before, games we've seen at, you know, Otakon right. or so like we know So let's go over some of the games. We'll talk about some of the games that stood out to mm -hmm. us. Uh, <coughs> that Rock, Paper, Scissors games was there. Uh, was brilliant. We game. had uh, Super, Super, Super Smash, Smash Flash, Flash 2. 2. Uh, we 2. We had um, Skyhook. Sneaky Ninja, Skyhook, Skyhook, Sneaky Ninja, Rivals of Ether. Rivals of Ether. The Dual Majors. Yep. Dual Majors and Smash Super Smash Brothers Crusade. Yeah. Smash Crusade, yeah. And Combat Core. That was the Combat Oculus Core. game. Combat Core. So all of these games were there, uh, playable, <coughs> and it was nice to see those developers um, talking about their game. Oh, yeah. Check that out on our YouTube channel as well. But uh, 
Any games that stood out to you guys? Uh, I really like I really like that rock paper scissors game. That yeah. I, I, I thought it's, it's it's a great idea. It takes something that's it's super simple, simple, makes it a three person fun. multiplayer game. It's chaotic. Just but like I said with Tony, I'd love to see a multiplayer aspect to it online. Like an online. Yes. I think you will. I I, I think so as well. And he also mentioned uh, he, there's a little more depth that he can do with he it. He definitely like some, said they're interested in some, doing uh, it. Some so. like uh, level hazards, things like that. <laughs> so right. really cool concept. Yep. Right. Right. Was Aether. Aether was good. Skyhook. Skyhook. I really awesome. like Skyhook. Super Smash Flash was cool. Super Smash Flash 2 was cool because of the different characters that yeah, you Yeah, the meet. different franchises they brought into yeah, it. Yeah, cool. a lot of fun. Um, I also agree. <coughs> Rivals of Ether was good. That Rock Paper Scissors yeah. game and uh, uh, Skyhook, a ton of fun. I mean, most of the games that we saw were like a Smash style kind of game anyway. Smash or multiplayer. Or Yeah, multiplayer. Well, I guess not Sneaky Ninja. I, that's, that's the only one I didn't play, was the Sneaky Ninja. Yeah. It was a platformer. Yeah. Pretty, cool puzzle platformer. Um, but yeah, rock, paper, scissors, probably my favorite game. It's fun. And it's fun because you don't you get the concept so easily that you're just going left, right, up, or but down, you, and they're chasing can't. one person, someone's chasing you. It and is, it's so simple. And it's stressful. It's stressful because we're standing it's next to each other, yelling at each other, yeah. <laughs> mad because of what's going on. It's and just every single game fun. we played was only like one or two points difference. Yep. It was very close. Games Except for me. Spread. Games are quick, games are fun. Oh yeah. Very cool. But uh, yeah, really, really good stuff overall. Uh, Smash fun. Com is great. Yeah, Super Smash Com. Can't wait to go back Smash next year. Was awesome. We'll Definitely be there next year. Next year. Um, check out all of our videos uh, that we covered for that. The, again, the indie indie interviews as well as the interviews with the uh, commentators, and commentators and the players. So uh, let's talk about where you can find out all that information. You can find it on youtubecom slash PSVGTV. Uh, you can also check out our streams at twitch.tv slash press underscore start underscore TV. Um, coming very soon, you'll be able to check out all of our contact on, content, content rather on uh, pressstarttv.com. So that'll be coming soon. That's all the time we have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time. Bye, everybody. Later. Later.